Well, welcome back to the Mini Machine Shop. I'm Dave. What a crazy week here so far. Um, first, I want to say that um, thank you to Tom Lipton. I had sent him in a viewer appreciation gift to say thank you for all the help that he's given me. And um, he was nice enough on his show. He put it on Monday Night Meat Loaf 93. And he was nice enough to plug my show which left me absolutely speechless because within two hours I had over 100 new subscribers and they're still coming in left and right. Um, thank you, Tom, and thanks to all the subscribers. I hope I can live up to your expectations. Um, got a lot of comments, uh, good comments, a lot of constructive stuff. Um, thanks to the one guy that caught on one of my videos I was talking about the guy that repaired my motor controller board for the lathe and I messed up his website link so thanks to the guy that called me on the carpet for that I went back in and corrected that so what else is going on um, I did decide I think I mentioned before to get all new knobs all matching knobs for the Gretchner and I'm glad I did you know, I, I, one of the videos for some reason I said $150 they're four bucks a piece so it, it, it's around fifty dollars for that, but I like it a lot. Those came in really nice, and I also did say I'm back online with the um, lathe. Okay. Had a bunch of projects already backed up. Um, one of them was I wanted to finish making the spacer adjuster for the new um, boring bar set. So I finished that off, tried it out in the lathe. Worked beautifully put a couple of the other boring bars in there and it's, it's on perfect height, does a great job for it. Um, what else did they do? Oh, my wife's got a ukulele and she wanted me to make a little bottom adapter piece. I had made the first one out of brass because she puts that strap, goes around and then it hooks on the bottom of the ukulele so I made one out of brass and she says, no, 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 I want it out of aluminum. Okay, I made one out of aluminum. So, what I had originally started was to show you how I finish and turn different materials. I'm going to go through a lot of different materials in the lathe and show you kind of how I finish, how it cuts, and how things work. Everything from uh, aluminum, steel, copper, stainless, all of it. So, let me reposition the camera and get it going. Alright, turn that light on. I hope that works. I don't know if that's giving a reflection or not. Yeah, I guess I'll leave it off. Oh, I know what I'll turn on the overhead light. Oh, there, that does it. Alright. Yeah, looks good. Okay, first first up, I've got the standard Harbor Freight indexable carbide tool cutter in there. Aluminum. And I'm set. I'm angling this guy 75 degrees over. And that seems to be kind of a nice sweet spot, but um yeah, I'm already on for a cut. And I am doing this strictly with the compound. So you can see that finish is pretty nice. Oh, I'm at the end of travel here. You get for not looking first, Dave. Yeah, I'm bringing it over. I'll just make that a quick cut. Yeah, I want to. Alright. So that's a pretty nice finish right there. Not much really even have to, I mean, it, it is smooth, no grooves, nothing, but, and the only way, like I said, to get it, you know, from my learning experience is this compound saddle, everything, nothing can move at all, it has to be rock solid, 
Alright, and as far as sanding, a lot of times I'll finish it off with different uh, different sandpapers. I did buy some of almost every grit there is out there. Um, this is, what's right now, this is 3,000. So this, when it finish comes out that nice, you don't really need very rough sandpaper at all to finish that off. Look at that. That's looking good. That's looking pretty good. Uh, and for those of you, uh, that was 3,000. I'm not sure if there's anything between that and this. I'm going to turn that off so you can hear. This is 5,000 grit, which I was amazed when it came because this is basically foam rubber. 3M, 5,000 grit. One piece of it off of Amazon. But it's pretty neat what it does. Yeah, that pretty much I took it down to a really nice finish. Then I've got special goop here. And I'd like to see if well, this thing keeps plugging up too. This is the blue stuff. Can you see that? Yeah. And let's see if anybody can guess what this secret sauce is and what it does. I know what it does, but am I going to get some out? Yeah, there. I, I got to get a better container because this thing just keeps plugging up. All right, secret sauce. There you go, mirror finish. If I had sanded that a little bit more, that would have been absolutely perfect. But, ta da! So let me know if you can, anybody knows what this stuff is. I'll probably, I mean, not probably, I'll tell everybody what it is in the next video. So I'll leave comments. Okay, so that's it for aluminum. Let me put some 1018 steel in there next. Alright, stock piece of 1018. I did change the tool out, like I said before, I keep one of these strictly for aluminum and soft materials, this one for steel and hard materials. So, oh yeah, and on the aluminum, I've used all, everything for cutting fluids, and it doesn't seem to make a difference whether you use cutting fluid or not. Steel's a little bit different. There we go. So see this angle, I'm actually getting some curls coming off of it. That's not too bad a thing. That's, yeah, that's pretty smooth. It's hard for me, even, yeah, it's really smooth. But I don't see a very good surface like it was in aluminum. If I tried WD-40. About three thousand. <laughs> that is hot stuff flying on. Clean off the W40. It's like the same kind of cut. Doesn't make that much of a difference. So I've always had to sand and work with it. So I've talked to uh, one video using the coarser sandpaper on this to get it started works better this is 320 and it gets all its marks out of it pretty quick and go on and go over to the 3000 why not but that doesn't really do too much the seal I guess is really hard and what I wind up using all the time is the scotch Bright. This is really, I mean, you don't want to rub this stuff on your face. It's that rough. And I just kind of grab it and walk off. And I get a really good finish. Really nice finish. Yeah, and I wonder if I could try the secret sauce on that. I should be able to. Yep. Alright, so I can get some more out of this thing. Come on squeeze like crazy and it's coming out yeah all right well that's all i'm gonna get all right all right this is a nice nice shine 
not as great as the aluminum, but it's still a nice shine. All right, so that's 1018. I'm going to show you another one here. I'll bring it back in a minute. All right, and this is 12L14. This is what everybody keeps saying is really easy to machine. It's clean. I should probably take that back a little further since it's going to flex. There. All right, so I don't see it being that much different than 1018. Again, it's the end of travel. Bring the compound all the way back. There you go. Yeah, this actually is machining pretty good. I might be on that sweet spot as far as the angle of the uh, tool post. That is giving me really nice cuts. So, but I guess you go in straight. I don't know. It's kind of hit and miss with the 12L14 to me. But then there's another type here. One of my friends is a machinist. He actually runs a machine shop. Um, and he said, gee, you know, you want to have fun. Uh, something really easy to machine like 12L14 is get this W1 water hardened steel. So this is W1. And it's really interesting too. Put some W forty on this guy. Long curls coming off of it, but it does machine pretty nice indeed. That is pretty close to a perfect finish, in my opinion. That is smooth. That's like machining alone. W1, water hardened. Uh, forgot where I bought that from. All right. Well, I'll bring you back with some stainless. All right, stainless in there. I forgot the number on it. I guess I'll tell you when I pull it out. But this is from Industrial Metal Supply. And I was thinking, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. But I did try it one time. It's like, because everybody says, oh, you can't drill it, you can't do this, you can't do that, it's hard. No, it lays really easy for <laughs> I'm going to go over here for a little bit. Kind of this, this beautiful finish is on it's crazy. What this stuff does. So don't be afraid to machine something out of stainless steel. Look at that. That is crazy nice. Gets hot though, pretty fast. All right, and the same thing. I was saying, oh, stainless, very hard. Undo it, whatever. Uh, if you got a good, good tool in there. Oh, did I say what was on it? What did I write on it? Oh shoot, I don't have anything written on it. All right, copper. Copper was fun. I had turned that, and it's like, yeah, everybody's saying, oh yeah, copper's hard too. Nope. Copper cuts really easy and pretty clean, too. All right, just curls right off. I don't know if any of this stuff really needs any cutting oils or not, but there's another <laughs> just gorgeous finish. So, I wanted copper, uh, actually I think copper is cutting nicer than brass does. Um, there's a piece of brass. Come on out of there, didn't lose it all the way. So a lot of this stuff you don't really need to finish or sand, it just it comes out really nice. Brass. Brass is kind of weird stuff because it 
kind of just explodes. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it as you turn it, but I love turning brass because of the, the shine and stuff that you get out of it. And again, I don't know if you need cutting fluid to make a difference or not. Oh, that's nice and crooked. As you can see, it just kind of explodes <laughs> in the dust <laughs> as you machine this stuff. That would need some finishing to it. Try the 3000 on it. Now, there was one show that I was watching on YouTube. It's Click Spring. And the guy was very detailed in what he was doing. He was making some uh, screws for grandfather's clock. And he went through every single detail showing how he's doing this and finishing that and polishing. And he used this compound and then it was too runny so he made it into a paste. And, I mean, such detail. And all of a sudden, he's showing the finished product and he goes, Oh, I finished it off with oak. What? What do you mean oak? <laughs> and so I figured the only thing he could have done was to take a piece of oak and rub it on there. And so I did. And you can see the black. It does polish it. Believe it or not, some kind of old grandfather's secret. Because it's taking stuff off of it and it does bring it to a brighter shine. And I can use the magic goop on that and I can get it, I mean, absolutely perfect. Because where's the, uh, the other side? And it's probably dulling by now. But that was. Yeah, that. No. Where's the other one? Oh, I put it up here. But that's where you can get it. Yeah, that's dulling. But I did finish this off with oak, even the face, all of that stuff. So that's kind of my stuff. Um, I don't think it makes a difference too much what tool you're using, because these are just the cheap Harbor Freight $25 set. I've tried all kinds of different tools. I mean, here's one that was made by a professional for me. Same result, same finishes. But it does seem like anything that's got a really sharp point to it, like these boring tools do, um, it leaves a tough finish. You've got to wind up sanding it a lot and trying to get the finish down. Well, I hope this video was educational. So, thanks for watching. Bye.